I'm recording. You, there you go. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, now, now it's working. Okay, there you go. Good. Did you have some specific questions that I could answer? No, I've just been going over the material, trying to trying, trying to learn as much as I can. I've been uh, good. I watched the, the video from the other day that we recorded, and I've been uh, trying to practice for, for doing my uh, my uh, voicemails and and such like that. And I've just been uh, trying to like get better at it. I mean, uh, practicing. You will uh, um, the voicemails because we get a lot of voicemails, yeah. and <laughs> I'm a big believer that voicemails should be part of your marketing. Mm -hmm. But you leave those different, uh, shock them. Or leave a voicemail where if you got that same voicemail, would you call that person back? Yeah. That If they call you back, you win. Yeah. You guys have to be kind of like, uh, enthusiastic when you're, when you're talking to on the. Exactly. Like if you call them up, you know, I'm just reaching out. How are you? You're not going to get a response. Oh. Get, put a little energy into it, uh, create an incentive. Hey, uh, you know, Mr. Bedrow, uh, um, I got, I've got the contracts and everything in front of me here. Uh, could you call me uh, before lunchtime today? Four, two, one, four, one, two, and, uh, I want to, I want to open escrow and get this thing going. Four, two, one, four, one, two, and Claude Diamond. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. That's good. Even, and if he doesn't, if it's the first phone call, this is what I do. Okay. That's why I call it guts for a reason. Cause I do crazy Claude shit like this. <laughs> oh, okay. I will, but here's my, here's my philosophy. And I, I've grown with no employees, just outside contractors, low overhead, no outside office, just really good Wi-Fi, good, good technology, talking to enough people every day and, and qualifying them and having good conversations. This is how you can make a lot of money. Yeah, I was, I was looking also uh, this weekend, I was trying to see the different ideas I could start doing for social media, start posting things on social media to get people in that way. That way I don't have to do a uh, cold calling all of the time. Let's uh, do, uh, we could do, you could take this recording right now with my permission. Always get permission whenever you, if you do it from somebody else. Because um, there's some federal laws and stuff, depending on what state you're in. Um, and use that recording and put it on YouTube. And then after you load it up, you have all the little boxes. You can send it to face, your Facebook page or group. You can send it to Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. You can blast a uh, Vimeo. You can blast it all over the place. What kind of video? First of all, what kind of leads do you want? Uh, I'm looking mainly to do like lease purchase uh, type deals right now. Okay. Let's do a video right now. Just two, three minutes. And you ask me about the advantage. What, Claude, what are the advantages of lease purchasing? For the, for the buyer, seller, whatever. And we'll do two, three minutes. And you take this video, you clip it, you can put it into QuickTime, and you can actually trim it and take out what you need. Are you familiar with QuickTime? Yes. Yeah, real easy to do. And now you got a video to upload. Boom. Okay. Uh, Claude, three, three Claude, two, the, one. Claude, what are the benefits of lease purchase for like the buyer and seller? It's a, it's a great question, Damon. Um, it's beautiful. You know, it depends on your perspective from the buyer, the seller, or the investor. Which one? Uh, seller. All three, or the seller. I have properties where I have put in what we call tenant buyers. I've had tenants and they, sometimes they do malicious damage and sometimes they don't pay on time uh, because the perception is you're the rich landlord. But when we get a tenant buyer, someone who we've pre-negotiated an option with, they see it as an opportunity to get into a home today that they can buy tomorrow or in the future. And that if they pay on time, they're rewarded. Uh, they're rewarded with that option. They're, if they take care of the maintenance, I don't need a maintenance comp a management company or anything else. Um, I, can make, uh, I can make money up front option money. I can make break even or positive cash flow. I can save real estate commission. Um, I can save another 10, 15%. Like I said, I don't need a management company because they're self-managed. They, they have an incentive to pay on time. So from my perspective as an investor, this is just a great way to manage the properties and make different streams of cash flow. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So now, uh, what are the, now the benefits to the buyer, I mean, uh, uh, 
um, they get, I mean, okay. they get, a, they get, they get into a home that they can start making their own, you know, they can, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, they can get over life ch challenges. I mean, everyone has, people have credit issues. I mean, uh, life happens sometimes. Sometimes people, um, they want to buy, everybody wants, it's the American dream. I, I don't care what age group you're in. Everybody wants their own place eventually because it's smart. You get tax benefits. You get uh, appreciation. You got a place you can call your own. Hey, man, I'm, a, I'm not a renter. I'm an I'm a owner of a property. And that property will be the best investment of your lifetime. So a rent own is a way that somebody who has challenges right now in their credit score, or maybe they haven't been on their job long enough, or maybe they don't have enough down payment right now for a conventional mortgage. I can go to people and say, I can get you into a good home today. And we, if you need two years to fix up your credit or be on your job longer or save up down payment, I can structure a deal for two years for you. And so in their perspective is that you're a good guy, you're helping them and that they have a, a means to get into a home and enjoy it now, but buy it later. Man, why, that is not a hard sell, is it? No, it's a great opportunity for them. Exactly. Hey, this was good. This was a good interview. Thank you for your time. That was good. <laughs> now, this is where you'd cut it off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now if you want to do, you want to do one more? Uh, I don't know. What can we talk about? <laughs> um, ask me about the, uh, the seller marketing this to uh, people of houses for, home, uh, for sale or for rent. Why is the, what's the advantage to someone who has a property sitting dead on the market? Okay. Three, uh, what, two, one. What are the advantages to doing a lease purchase to, for a seller that uh, has a house that's been sitting on the market for a while? You know, um, most people have a mortgage, they're paying taxes, insurance, homeowner fees, landscaping, property sitting empty, money's just going out, right? Yeah, costing a well, lot. I'll go to people who have properties for sale or for rent, and I'll say to them, how would you like to sell your home right now? How would you like to have someone who'll move in your home, take care of it, pay you scrupulously on time, take care of all minor maintenance? If you could be a little flexible in your terms, Mr. Mr. Prospect, would you be interested in doing a rent own on your home now and getting, getting exactly what you want, but maybe waiting a little bit longer for it rather than losing money every month? Is that something of interest uh -huh. to you, sir? Yeah. My name's Claude Diamond. I'm a private investor. I have several clients right now that need a home like yours. I could put it together. I could do the deal with you and then set it up and then set it up with them. Or I could teach you how to do it and you could keep all the money instead of doing a deal with me. Would you, would you like to learn how to do this on your own and pay me a simple consulting fee? Or would you like to do a deal with me right now and not have to worry anymore about the property? Uh, I'll do, can you show me how to do it? I'd be glad to show you how to do it. Would you, I have a consulting program where I can provide you with the materials, the forms, the, everything you need, and I can show you how to set up a marketing, uh, marketing uh, program so you attract new tenant buyers. Would that be reasonable for me to charge you a very small fee and you can do this on your own? Uh, well, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, how much would you charge? I don't know, that's a great question. What's, uh, what's your property, what's the, what's the gross value of your property? How much would you like for it? Um, uh, selling it for 200, 200,000. Do you think if you paid me two and a half percent of 200,000, that's, um, what is that? $5,000? Yeah. You think that's a lot cheaper than a realtor would charge you, uh, for the house and that 5,000 possibly can be retrieved from the tenant buyers and uh, still leave room for a profit for you. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Which means, uh, yeah, I'd like to do this. What? I'd like to do this. Thank you, sir. Which card would you like to use? Boom. That's a console. That's switching to either price or terms, doing it on your own, deciding whether you want to sublet it, whether you want to arbitrage it, whether you want to uh, consult with it. It doesn't really matter. I was thinking to. Uh... We have a visitor here. Who? Hi there, owner. You're a little early. Hello. See oh. us here. <laughs> I guess he can't see me. I'm going to have to take him off. Or, sir, if you have an appointment with me, it's a little later. Okay, boom. Yeah, I was, I was going to see if, uh, now, could you offer that on every, every seller you uh, talk to, if they're open to lease purchase, offer them lease purchase and consulting on every deal? Why are you in business? 
to make money today. Yeah. Can I have an amen, please? Amen. <laughs> I want you to get in the habit. How can, I'll ask you a question. It's not rhetorical. Why don't we make offers on every person or every, every opportunity we have? Do you think we should make offers in every situation? Yeah. Maybe there's a few exceptions where the guy is just annoying or yeah. <laughs> just unethical or something. I, I, so I don't mean everybody. But do you, any reasonable person, um, motivated, not motivated, wants knowledge, wants to do it on their own, wants, to, wants, to take, wants us to do the deal, do you think we should make offers all the time? Yeah. Why don't we do that? Yeah, I, I need to. <laughs> why don't we do that? Seriously, why? I'm I'm a psycho babbler, Damon. Why do you think we don't make offers to everybody? Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe fear kind of takes control sometimes, where you're you're afraid. What what do they accept it, or what what happens if they don't? Or uh, so whose fault is that? This is tough. Now I'm getting this is uh, tough love here. Me. <laughs> why? So we do it because there's so much reason we have shortcomings in income is because we have fear of rejection or being humiliated or embarrassed or someone won't like us or perception that we're too pushy mm -hmm. all the time. But your uncle Claude is telling you make offers. What's the, what's the worst they can say? No. Yeah. That makes no difference on how you, your character, how you proceed as a human being. They're, they're, not, they're not allowed to sit in judgment of you. Only you can, only you can put that sword of Damocles over your head. Okay? Right. So, so let make me an offer. Let's do a role play. Let's do, you can, you're going to make about three videos out of this one video today. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, three. Uh, so set me up for a Claude. Uh, should I make offers to everybody or something? Let's talk like that on the thing. Three, two, one. Claude, should I make offers on every uh, every home that or every seller I talk to? I don't know. What do you? Th uh, I don't know. That's a great question. Do you want to make? You don't want to make money, do you? Yeah, I want to make money. Today. What do you think? Is, what do you think is the number one problem with investors, neophyte investors, beginning not investors? Making, not making enough offers. Make offers all the time. Make offers to everybody. They, if they say no, so what? Tell them thank you. I appreciate that. You know. Uh, so what are you going to do about your? Then you go back to. Then you go back to questions again. Say, so sir, what are you going to do about that vacant home? It's costing you money. It's been empty for six months. I'd like to give you price or terms today, or even train you how to sell the property in the next thirty days with a lease purchase strategy. What are you going to do? I just let it sit empty for another six months? No, I don't want to do that. Suppose there was a way I could teach you how to do it yourself. Or I'm willing to say, could I send you a contract? I'll send you a letter of intent today with three different offers, a cash offer, a lease purchase offer, and an owner finance offer. And you can either accept all of them or reject them when we speak at 3.30 today. How do you feel about that? That sounds good. Which means? Uh, if everything looks good, we can maybe move forward on one of them. I'll, I'll have to take a look at it. Is that maybe yes or maybe no? I heard a maybe in there. Uh, if one of the offers looks good, yeah, I'll move forward with it. What? If one, of, uh, I'll move forward with it if one of them looks good. Ain't I annoying? <laughs> the thing, the thing you just did. I don't know if you were doing that on purpose or not, but you were, um, you were uh, using a lot of what do we call wishy-washy words. I know you said maybe. Yeah. You, you know what the word maybe means to me? It sends shivers down my spine. I uh, know. <laughs> you don't know what, what it means. I mean, it, it can mean anything. Why do prospects use unspecific terminology? It's like an exit so they can get out. So they can get out. Do you think they, they know they're doing it or it's uh, subliminal? It's unconscious. I guess I, I'm not sure it could be either, but both a little bit of both. You're, you're right. I, I, I think it can be either. I think some people get in the habit of doing the maybe, probably, should, could, likely, all these wishy-washy words. I don't think they even know it. What they do know is they don't want to make a commitment right away, and they want an escape plan. Yep. I you have to... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, they say, I didn't commit to it. I said, maybe, I didn't know. Uh, that's how they, uh, they, they, they answer you. you. After a while, I'm hypersensitive to words. You heard it in the role play today in the group. 
when I get the, well, it sounds really good, Claude, and everything. And I'm going to talk to my wife. I'm going to check my finances, and uh, I'll get back to you pretty soon, okay? You're a great guy. Thanks for all the information, Damon. Yeah. What is the, what's going through the amateur salesman's mind when he hears that, that, that crap? Oh, he'll call me back. He's gonna, we're going to do something later on. <laughs> oh, I crushed it. Oh, I got it. Oh, it's what, what does the gut salesman say? Or think? I messed up. <laughs> All right. It, Man, I don't have, I got a leaky bag of shit here. This is not part of my life. <laughs> this is, I got nothing here. Yeah. I have nothing here. See, the amateurs, they're, they lack the confidence sometimes. So if they hear something they perceive as positive, you know, say, oh, I'm going to close this guy. And then what? Then they go through the whole, oh, I'm going to leave messages. I'm going to follow up. I'm going to leave voicemails. I'm going to call them back next week. And the guy goes on the witness protection program, right? Yeah, you can't get hold of him. You can't get hold of him. That's why when I get on the phone with somebody, I close them in the first phone call. It's very, Guts is very aggressive. Not everybody likes that kind of a, a authoritative, direct, honest approach. I do. It works. I'd rather have a guy fire me right now than get one of these lingering, maybe, probably guys. Because it wastes waste your time. You can be making money elsewhere on doing other deals. Yeah, there's nothing there. Why are we in business? Make money today. Today. Tom tomorrow, forget about it. They're going to meet somebody else. They're going to do a deal with somebody else. They're going to forget you after they hang up on the phone. How important is it to make an impression in that first phone call? Big. It's, a big, it's big to do that. Yeah. You go to the dentist with a toothache, okay? You go in, oh, you know, do you want him to put Novocaine or, or, or pull the tooth or do whatever he's got to do to take away that? I'm a crybaby. How fast do you think I want that pain removed? As soon as possible. Yeah, you go. Do you already want? Well, I'll think about it, Doc. I know it's hurting my pain. I'll come back in a week or two. Or do you want him to say, "Well, come back in two, three weeks. I'm a little busy right now. You're in pain. You can't eat. You can't. Did you ever have a toothache? No. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, it's you. You can't function. No, I can imagine. You want immediate resolution. I want you so emotional, so involved in whatever buying, selling, investing. My job is to get you so emotional and then show you the intellectual cures that I have. Mm -hmm. And if I qualify you, do you have the authority? Do you have the money? Do you have the motivation? Do you have the time? Can I close you right now? Boom. Yeah. It's, it's called guts for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think for me, I need to learn to, to, to listen more on the phone when I'm on, because uh, people, they'll say words and I don't catch it. I need to learn to, to listen better and to catch the words and such. Uh, I guess I'm I'm so worried about how I'm seeing how uh, worrying how I sound on the phone. That's that's and I, I forget to listen. That's my that's my problem. I think there's a there's a wonderful thing. I'm the probably when I was younger, very self conscious, shy, mm -hmm. always. I you know sometimes I I just didn't want to be the center of attention or anything like that. I wouldn't do outrageous shit like I do today. I, yeah. I finally got to the, my happy place. Uh, I, I call it I-D-A-G-E-S-L. I don't give a shit land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's where I don't allow other people to sit in judgment of me. I sit in judgment of myself. Yeah. After every phone call or everything, I do a diagnostic. What did I do? Did I, just, did I screw that up? Did I, I shouldn't have said that one thing. I turned off that guy. Uh, oh, I did something really smart when I made him that offer, when I set the time frame. After every phone call or everything, I do a kind of a diagnostic on myself. Okay. Um, why do you think I do that? To get better. Yeah. Uh, to get better and, and if you make any mistakes or whatever, I, I need to know, remember not to do that next time or... So you're always going to learn from it. To, to just get better. Yep. If I can get better, yeah. I can close more people. I, I try. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I was, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. I try to keep this. I try to keep this business very simple. What are the things I? What are the simple things I can do every day 
to make an honest buck? What are those simple things I can do? Talk to people. Do it, spend 30, 60 minutes on marketing. Um, a follow up. I always follow up with people. It can be an audio, a video, it can be a letter of intent, it can be a hard contract. Okay. Um, this is the motions that give you the consistency, the volume that you need to, to sooner or later, someone's gonna say yes, if you have that kind of routine. Now, now uh, if, you, if you qualify someone for like a lease purchase and they wanna do it, do you send them a letter of intent first and then, uh, and then the, uh, the contract or? Good question. It depends on the, are they an eight, nine or 10 and I got a commitment or are they a wishy-washy five, six, seven? Okay. That, yeah, the, the more motivated they are, the, uh, maybe you'll send them a contract rather than there. Exactly. If I get a, and I'm going to use, uh, I use hello sign or DocuSign and I'll even tell them, Mr. Bojo, can I call you Damon? I'm Claude. Don I'm Claude. Um, yeah, really enjoyed uh, talking with you today. I think we, uh, I think we pr we're pretty close to doing a deal. I'm going to give you a thousand down, a thousand a month on a three-year contract on a three-year sales contract. Are we on the same page? And I'm going to give you your full asking price, three twenty. Are we on the same page? Yeah, we are. I'm going to send you. Thank you, sir. You like the way you do business. I appreciate it. You're very straightforward. Um, stroke always, always intermingle strokes. Um, and I'm going to send you a DocuSign. Uh, right now, um, you look it over. Can we talk again at 3.30 this afternoon? Um, if you get that back to me, I'll call up my attorney, open escrow. Uh, we'll stay in communication. We'll close January 15th. Your problems are over, sir. And we'll talk at 3.30. You might have some questions or something like that. Sounds good. You don't have an iPhone, do you, sir? Yes. Do you mind if I do a FaceTime call? I'd like it be my honor to meet you face-to-face. -face. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe we could get together after this deal and get some gumbo or etouffee or what are all the, what are all those good foods you guys got? Uh, fricasse, etouffee, gumbo. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's all good food. <laughs> this, this is what I really sound like, by the way. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I do anything I can do to keep your attention, to keep the conversation going, to get commitments up the ladder. Uh, the minute I start hearing the maybes, the probabilities, I got to check my finances. I got to talk to my spouse. Call me in two weeks. Mm. I know I'm wasting my time now. Get off and, the phone and do a follow up later. Yeah. I have to go to my next call, Damon. Great, uh, great topic, man. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll see you again. Do I have to, for the next one? Do we schedule? I have to schedule next time or? Um, you, you're, you, you can schedule twice a month. Okay. Go, in fact, if you go right now into my schedule system, you can go 14 days out. Okay. okay well, I, think, I think we have another one on Saturday. That was from like the, the, the work. Oh, program. okay. And then we're all set. Then we're beautiful. Okay. Right. Very good, Bye. sir. I'm going to send you, um, I'll send you this video a little later today. Okay. Yo, would you mind if I took a few sections also out of this and use them? That sounds good. Because you, you gave, these were some great role plays and stuff. There was. See, I, I use this stuff. You can use it for marketing. People will call you, follow you, and they'll say, oh, I heard you with Claude, and I live in New Orleans, and I have a property. Boom, that's marketing, man. Yep. And that's make sure you, get, you, you, you put your contact information so they can get hold of you. Yep. Do you have a web page with a scheduling calendar? No, I need, I'm, I'm working on that. I need to get that done. Okay, did I give you the Blab link so you could yeah. set it up? Yeah, it works great for me. I get tons of leads. Got to go. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah.